have been lucky enough to see two species of shark in the wild and the basking shark is one of them. We used to live in Cornwall and we had a small boat. It was whilst out in the boat, just off the coast of North Cornwall, that we encountered the shark. It was utterly amazing and as it was bigger than the boat and I was pregnant, it was also a little scary. It swam around our boat for a little while with its mouth open and then moved off. At some distance from the boat it breached. We were quite astounded by this but later found out that they have been observed to do this and scientists think it is to try and dislodge parasites. Another theory is that female basking sharks breach to signal their readiness for mating. These magnificent animals can reach up to 12 meters in length, can weigh up to six tons and are thought to live to be around 50 years old. They can occur alone or in small schools. They are listed by the IUCN as an endangered species and their numbers, unfortunately, are continuing to decline. They were hunted in the 20th century for their liver oil. Their livers are massive and make up to 25% of their body weight, which is absolutely huge. The oil was used in lamps, cosmetics, perfumes, and as lubricants. Their meat, skin, and large fins were also used. It's estimated that as many as 100,000 sharks were fished from the North Atlantic, bringing populations to the brink of collapse. Many countries began prohibiting the catch of basking sharks in the 1990s, but they are still hunted in some areas, such as China, for their fins to make shark fin soup. A fresh pair of fins can fetch up to $1,000 in Asian fish markets. In Japan, the fins are used as an aphrodisiac, a health food, and its oil is used as a lubricant for cosmetics. As well as this, barking sharks get caught in fishing nets and are struck by boats. There are also concerns about them ingesting microplastics and the effect of climate change on their prey, plankton. They are one of three species of sharks that are filter feeders and feed upon the tiny zooplankton found in the water. To do this, they swim with their mouth open wide, filtering around 2 million litres of water per hour. The zooplankton are trapped by small black gill rakes, which are covered in mucus. The gill rakes are replaced annually. They are discarded during the winter months and new ones grow in the springtime. These giants also have about 1,500 tiny hooked teeth. There are six rows of teeth in the upper jaw and nine rows below. Scientists think that these teeth are used in mating. They have observed what they thought was mating behaviour and saw one shark holding on to another by biting down on its pectoral fins and behind the dorsal fin. Not much is known about their reproduction and I have found in the literature vastly different information about when they reach sexual maturity. Anything from two to four years of age, all the way up to 18 years for a female. It is a similar story with the gestation period, which one scientist has suggested is about three and a half years long, whilst another has suggested just a year. It is fairly certain that females give birth to one to two live young, which are about 1.7 meters long. Basking sharks mate by internal fertilization, and a female shark that was dissected shortly after mating was found to have four gallons of sperm inside her. It is thought that male and female basking sharks live in different places and likely only come together to mate. Once the female is pregnant, she separates from the other females. They are rarely caught in surface waters, so disappear somewhere safe for the time of gestation. Where? No one seems to know. Basking sharks are ovoviviparous, which means pups hatch from eggs while still inside their mother's uterus and then continue to develop before being born. Only the right ovary is functional and contains around 6 million eggs. Many of these eggs are used to feed the developing young. This method of nourishing the developing shark has also been seen in other shark species and consists of a rich eggy soup. This may explain the strange snub nose found in newborn sharks, which has grooves in it, which may act like a straw, helping the developing shark to suck up the soup. The uterus is also lined with structures called trophonometa, or feeding threads. These structures have been found in some rays and are long, nutritive threads that feed the developing sharks directly into their esophagus. So it could be that the developing young of basking sharks adopt more than one feeding strategy. They are called basking sharks as in the summer they like to cruise along near the surface and they look as though they are soaking up the sunshine. They are widely distributed in the temperate and tropical waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and some parts of the Indian Ocean, such as Southern Australia, Indonesia, 
and South Africa. It can be found in coastal waters as well as in the open ocean, in the surf zone and occasionally in brackish water. With the use of satellite tags, basking sharks have been recorded undergoing long migrations across the Atlantic Ocean from east to west and from north to south and also shorter ones from waters off the west coast of Scotland and the Isle of Man to places such as the Bay of Biscay and some moved even further south to waters off the Iberian Peninsula and North Africa. Some of them remained in British waters. Some sharks returned to British waters in the summer where they were tagged and some returned to other areas in the UK such as the Celtic Seas. Why basking sharks migrate is still unclear but reasons as to why they do may include searching for foraging grounds, thermoregulation by moving to areas or depths with a preferred temperature, movement towards mating grounds or returning to where they were born. There is an amazing amount unknown about the life history of basking sharks. To be able to protect them adequately, research needs to continue to discover more about their reproduction and their migration habits. Protecting a species that migrates from one country's waters to another is difficult and the extent to which they do this needs to be understood in order to develop a robust conservation strategy across their range. Hopefully there is sufficient protection without this knowledge to enable basking shark numbers to start to increase and in time more will be discovered about these gentle and elusive sharks. If you have enjoyed this video then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.